Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Zahra. I work for Microsoft on various systems and security projects. And uh, in this talk, I want to uh, discuss uh, some of the ways that uh, we can use uh, large language models for improving uh, kernel bug discovery. And uh, this is not an official Microsoft product. It's uh, mostly discussing some of the ways that uh, we can use them better and uh, some of the challenges that we still need to uh, resolve if we uh, want to get a more automatic ways of uh, like utilization of uh, LLMs for uh, kernel patching or kernel uh, vulnerability uh, discoveries. So let's get it started. So as you know, uh, large language models are uh, becoming more and more advanced. And uh, that's why in recent years, uh, we can see the integrations of LLMs in a wide range of like use cases, software stacks, security scenarios for monitoring, for like uh, finding uh, like um, adversarial patterns. And uh, that's uh, like an exciting area now that uh, like we can integrate LLMs in uh, like different use cases. And uh, one of the reasons for that is that like uh, LLM, like uh, basically the entire software stack and uh, around it, it's becoming uh, like um, more flexible and better and more mature for designing customized uh, model. And uh, I really like this uh, uh, like description of LLMs to like operating system from uh, like um, Andrea uh, Cardovita that uh, basically it mentions that like even from distribution perspectives uh, LLMs are uh, becoming more sim uh, similar to operating systems because there are closed source uh, LLM models and uh, there are uh, like uh, open source ones that uh, is similar to like Linux and uh, also uh, all of the components, it's like getting more complex from like all the systems interactions, the file system, caches, like um, basically like similar to uh, IPC like interactions with other models. So uh, this is a uh, basically uh, exciting time for uh, like designing customized uh, models. Uh, so one of the questions that uh, we were looking uh, for like um, as a use case for LLMs uh, was this question that uh, can we use LLMs for uh, like auto more automating the patching process on the uh, Linux kernel. And uh, the architecture that uh, we were discussing was that like can we use, uh, for example, the generative adversarial networks, like putting several uh, models for generating a, a good uh, input for basically before going through the um, uh, the whole patching generator and these models interact with each other uh, and basically go through this iteration uh, loop to finally uh, in, like uh, create that uh, at the, that patch that can be like uh, deployed uh, maybe like a, a starting from a, a, a small patches. But uh, the question was that, like, what would be like the uh, this architecture look like? What would be the uh, data, the uh, like uh, uh, input that we need to like uh, provide for uh, this for both the generator and uh, the discriminator? And uh, basically, uh, one of the main problems here uh, that uh, we also uh, were looking for was that can we, as a part of this process, uh, like our before, uh, like our generator also detect that this uh, like code has some vulnerabilities, uh, so it it won't generate like vulnerable patches. So it can find bugs or suspicious pat uh, patterns, or if it can detect like some of these codes are uh, I don't know copied from uh, Stack Overflow or uh, some uh, like sources that basically can be marked that uh, like uh, should be checked. Uh, so the patch, the generated patch won't be like some vulnerable patch uh, that uh, would be like even worse than um, not using LLMs at all. So uh, that's why we uh, like uh, looked at three different ways, uh, different techniques for uh, improving uh, the, that particular part of uh, the, the bigger problem of uh, automating, uh, automated patching 
uh, to just find out like uh, can we improve like uh, just and make sure that like uh, we have a process for finding some of the bugs for even like uh, making sure that it knows some of the vulnerability descriptions that we provide and can can it uh, like look for those specific bugs and uh, so uh, we're going to discuss these three approaches uh, from uh, first the simplest like uh, prompt engineering uh, plus um, rack that's basically like uh, you're giving more information to uh, your uh, LLM and uh, the second uh, is uh, LLM based assistant API uh, from OpenAI and also then uh, fine I discussed the fine tuning process uh, on some of the data that uh, with, uh, with that, like it's, it can be useful. So the first step uh, for adding more uh, like information to our um, LLM uh, is true, uh, like uh, prompt engineering and uh, retrieval augmented generation or uh, RAG. Now, there are several uh, papers that uh, basically focused on uh, this this area for vulnerability detections, uh, not specifically on Linux kernel. Uh, there is one actually uh, that's um, on um, improving the fuzzing that's basically like uh, integrating LLMs to uh, syscaller, but um, that's a different uh, story. I don't want to uh, go through the details of that. Um, so we took a look at uh, those uh, papers, like uh, finding like uh, if they have useful suggestion for prompt engineering and um some some of the uh, suggestions were useful uh, such as like uh, describing uh, the vulnerability first describing the api uh, first describing the data flows uh, for the code and these are general uh, like in, uh, information some more uh, were more useful for c like uh, for example one of the papers finding was that um, gpt3 uh, is mostly like uh, very good with java but uh, for C, those uh, recommendations were uh, more uh, helpful, and uh, and some other uh, techniques that they suggested, uh, such as like uh, uh, first discussing uh, like uh, the uh, high level uh, like description of the code, and then uh, basically um, ask the like uh, the uh, LLM for line by line or function by function um, uh, investigations and um, for our evaluation environment we started very um, small uh, with uh, 32 uh, mainstream patches uh, we picked mainstream patches because uh, they have like uh, already like we can see um, like reviewers opinions like uh, what is the actual final uh, fix for a bug and uh, like useful detailed informations of like uh, how the uh, bug is like um, happened, how you can reproduce it, some like a specific uh, like uh, debugging information. So that that's a good uh, source to compare uh, what uh, we can uh, like expect from like a uh, LLM and uh, what we have currently. And uh, the other source was like uh, pure, uh, like 15 kernel source code uh, from uh, kernel version 5.19. And some of the uh, like uh, uh, areas that uh, we were working on, uh, like such as SLE Linux, IMA, uh, Hyper-V, VSM, and uh, 15 uh, kernel code I picked uh, uh, from those areas. And uh, for RAG to fit like more information to our model, uh, as I mentioned, like uh, the current mainstream patch descriptors are good sources, and some of the security blogs, uh, such as Google Project Zero, for more complex vulnerability CV details, not much, but a little bit. Uh, and uh, this this was like a, basically an, or a small environment uh, to experience uh, to experience uh, design experiments with uh, OpenAI uh, GPT models. So, for example, this patch uh, that's um, uh, fixing a uh, uh, issue on uh, BPFG. That's basically uh, the problem is that it's uh, that uh, piece of code assumes that uh, like the current process has uh, conditional access to unconditional access to a, a page that is always available, but uh, 
that uh, address when you size the page and change the uh, page size, it's not available and it's causing a memory leak and the uh, SQL. So um, basically, when we uh, ask like a, a model about uh, detecting like any vulnerabilities, memory vulnerabilities, memory leak in uh, uh, that piece of code, like unmodified code, not the patch. Uh, so uh, the model couldn't detect it and it was like, no, there is no uh, memory vulnerability here. And uh, then uh, we manually uh, wrote a description that uh, there, there can be a places that uh, there is a specific uh, dependency or assumptions to like an uh, address that may not be available for that kind of process. It's basically not giving the, like, uh, the whole patch to, to the model, but a very a smaller uh, manual process for uh, like uh, describing that this is the high level uh, issue and then uh, we uh, like ask again with this uh, like uh, the uh, this is our code and what was the problem and uh, this time uh, surprisingly well it describes like exactly what what can go wrong and uh, that's why uh, like uh, after that we ask like can you create a patch for that uh, and as you can see, it can detect like exactly uh, where that uh, variable should have, like if we should add a condition. So if that's uh, like uh, there is a change in the uh, size of that, it could go to uh, like it um, have another uh, like um, condition for handling that. Um, that is not the right way of uh, fixing this bug, but uh, as you can see, it's like completely different from the mainstream patch. But it could detect like where uh there is an issue and what is the uh, definition of like uh, that the more um, and better description of that uh, possible vulnerability that can be really helpful another feature that uh, we uh, wanted to, our model to ideally have uh, was like the ability to uh, detect copied code uh, from well-known sources uh, that are uh, not specifically secure such as like a stack overflow that uh, may have a uh, vulnerable code pages. Uh, so basically the model could just mark it that this patch is coming from uh, like some uh, like uh, insecure sources. And uh, when we uh, like tried several uh, code copied from the Stack Overflow, uh, we could see that like uh, the model could really not detect any uh, pattern, any suspicious pattern. It could even like uh, like we ask, breaking it down to like uh, basically finding like a specific parts so that are uh, covered. But it gives a lot of description that this is a well-known pattern, for example, for capabilities to be used like that. And uh, but at the end, it was like I, I can't really identify uh, any uh, like uh, specific uh, evidence that says that like this is a Stack like Overflow uh, code. Uh, so uh, basically, for giving more information uh, to, to the, for adding more information to, to the model, uh, we picked a lot of uh, like um, similar uh, code from a Stack Overflow on a specific kernels areas that were related. For example, the crypto API. Uh, so uh, like uh, these are, for example, uh, the files, the file IDs, like this number of files that are. Uh, copied from um, uh, like a different uh, like uh, Stack Overflow responses, but they're all, all really tagged with like that uh, crypto uh, API from the kernel. And then we use the Assistant API. That's basically uh, it's useful for uh, like uh, feeding more information uh, without uh, also like uh, you have like this uh, like uh, model that's. You don't need to repeat a lot of like uh, instructions uh, uh, for it to, again and again, and it can be useful for fitting like a smaller number of like uh, uh, sources that uh, you want uh, you want uh, the model to um, be aware of. And uh, so this was uh, actually like a very simple and uh, like naive uh, way of uh, like. Um, feeding the model as you can see like uh, the rag model that's uh, basically uh, described uh, here just like as as we did like uh, feeding uh, files is really you cannot really scale uh, for more complex pattern but uh, even for uh, this case 
uh, it was helpful that like uh, at, at the end uh, our assistant was like uh, yes that code seems to have a specific uh, patterns and it's copied from uh, Stack Overflow. So um, for basically uh, this kind of uh, like pattern detection, uh, we really need like a, a larger number of like uh, data and more uh, sophisticated ways of like uh, fine tuning our model. Uh, but uh, even this uh, small uh, like improvement, a small set of like uh, uh, feeding the code uh, code spaces for the exact uh, like related uh, parts of the kernel uh, from a Stack Overflow and using the Assistant API was helpful. So the result uh, the result we were seeing from like uh, the both uh, previous techniques were not really like good results and uh, they involved a lot of uh, still manual uh, like interactions and uh, it was not really the, the, something that can be useful much in and or be reliable really in, uh, to, to be used in uh, kernel by discovery. Uh, so the next step was that uh, so can we uh, basically improve really improve like uh, the LLM's knowledge on some of the specific uh, like. Uh, criteria that we care about, like the vulnerabilities that we care about. And we want like uh, only for those uh, like things uh, have a like proper uh, like um, improvement on our LLM. And uh, that's why uh, the next step was uh, using uh, OpenAI uh, fine tuning uh, API. And uh, for that, basically like the, not all uh, like GPT models can be fine tuned, so they have uh, some of the uh, models uh, that are uh, that you can fine tune, and uh, they suggest that GPT 3.5 uh, Turbo is better for fine tuning. Uh, so we tried that one, and it's al also less uh, expensive than uh, GPT 4. Uh, so, so we were looking for uh, some data that basically uh, could help us uh, for uh, fine tuning and uh, kernel CVs are actually uh, not that helpful so they the only thing that uh, when we saw that they can be useful is um, ranking the severity of uh, vulnerability so they can say okay this attack is similar to this uh, previous CV so it can have this uh, like a specific uh, severity like uh, it's a high or no, but it wasn't really helpful because the descriptions are like not that uh, detailed, so it wasn't really helpful with uh, detection process. Uh, the other thing I was uh, like uh, curious about was um, basically uh, we have more complex forms of attacks that uh, you can see like we have a lot of uh, good security blogs uh, about them, and can we use those sources like for example Project Zero uh, exploits on um improving our uh, LLMs um, or model understanding and uh, this is for example one of the examples uh, that uh, so we picked several uh, like uh, project zero um, sources uh, change the format uh, fit them to uh, basically uh, be, have the same uh, like uh, fine-tuning format for open AI and uh, so basically before this this process uh, our model couldn't really detect uh, what's what's happening in uh, that uh, code, uh, code base on um, RMAP. That was an issue on uh, the anonymous, uh, anonymous virtual uh, page areas. And um, after uh, the, the process, uh, they actually uh, surprisingly the model could uh, really uh, pick what was wrong, describe uh, like really in details that. Uh, this is the uh, problem that, uh, like, uh, for example, we have these uh, mapped pages that are that having a, a dangling page and a pointer, and this 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 causing that. And uh, so I asked that, like, uh, can you uh, now that you know the attack, can you uh, write a, a, a patch for our map to uh, fix that? And though it could uh, describe like exactly where are the problems it couldn't really fix that so the uh, patch is like really uh, like not 
useful. It's really basic, but it could detect that uh, this area, this anonymous VMA structure, should shouldn't have this this pointer. And the actual patch, like it's not comparable. Like the actual patch um, is very detailed and uh, uh, like not even comparable from accuracy uh, to our model, but it could detect that uh, these places should be changed. So that that was an improvement, and it could identify that this uh, like code can cause this complex attack that was uh, described. Another uh, source for uh, like fine tuning our models to no more adv advanced uh, like uh, sort of attacks are academic papers. They usually come with a lot of technical descriptions of that categories and also all the related works and. Uh, you, if they're like having open source data sets, actually, that's also very useful. Like after uh, you uh, like uh, fine tune the model, you can test that uh, like it, the model is really uh, like um, memorize all the details. And uh, so, for example, in this case, uh, we picked uh, three papers uh, that uh, are coming with like uh, um, open source uh, tests, uh, like the uh, kernel code tests that. Uh, they're used for their evaluations. And we could see that, uh, like, for example, in this simple case, uh, like, uh, the, after the, um, fine tuning, the model could say exactly which lines are a problem, exactly, uh, where the type confusion is happening and how this can cause, like, uh, more complex, uh, like, attacks. That's, that was, uh, kind of the high level and descriptions that, uh, like uh, the, describing the paper, so it was an uh, interesting uh, result. Similarly, for another paper, uh, we could, and that was more on like uh, basically the memory leaks that uh, you could reason with through the uh, uh, memory ownership. And uh, again, uh, we fine tuned the model and it could uh, detect the uh, um, test cases that uh, at the end we uh, grab from the paper and uh, their open source uh, test. And uh, so these are not a uh, large number of papers, so it's, the results are not that uh, reliable. Uh, and uh, basically, uh, we were just uh, trying to know what's, what are the limitations and can be uh, like helpful to uh, read the model. Uh, so the results are interesting, but at the same time, there are uh, like the uh, number of tokens that like if, if you uh, basically break the uh, tokenize the papers and uh, those are like really a lot of uh, tokens and it can be really expensive to scale it in a large number of uh, like papers. So it can be useful for a specific sets of vulnerabilities that uh, like if you're looking for this, this specific for example, memory vulnerabilities, uh, but uh, for scaling that, uh, it needs more uh, like uh, work, more advanced techniques uh, for uh, feeding these data. So another useful uh, data source, specifically for uh, low-level kernel uh, development, like uh, when you're dealing with uh, hardware or hypervisor, uh, the architecture docs and uh, like uh, arc manuals, like arm manuals, like as you know, these are very long uh, documents and full of details that can be really helpful for finding uh, like bugs and uh, debugging. And uh, so uh, I started with uh, a relatively a small one because uh, the first it's very expensive uh, to like uh, fit that uh, like large, probably millions of. Uh, tokens, uh, if like for example it start with Intel manuals or something like that. Uh, so I started with a smaller one. Um, it's about uh, 200 pages for Hyper-V, and it has like images uh, tables. So uh, one of the things that was useful was uh, having two versions, like text-based uh, tokenization, and then converting uh, the uh, PDF to a lot of images and extract them separately. And uh, so this was uh, basically helpful for finding, like, uh, the uh, fine-tuned model was actually really knowing better about uh, details of, like, uh, basically MSR configurations for Hyper-V and Hyper-Calls, and it was, like, uh, uh, basically completely different in describing um, uh, my, uh, like, Hyper-V-related uh, codes. 
is so looking at, uh, for example, our BSM uh, kernel module, and it could find four uh, issues that uh, they're not part of the mainstream uh, yet, uh, like we didn't test on um, the analysis on main, mainstream, it was mostly on uh, my uh, dev environment, like on uh, VSM codes that needs to be uh, uh, verified. But uh, yeah, it was like really uh, surprising that uh, it could understand like specifically hyper calls and MSR configurations uh, much better than uh, the previous version. Uh, our uh, final uh, like fine tune model could do uh, like really much better on our small uh, data set. So from our 32 uh, mainstream uh, patches, it could identify like 29 of them. Like the bug was identified exactly the bug that was uh, expected from like the 15 uh, kernel codes that like we asked for file uh, function by function, like uh, line by line investigation. It can find 11 uh, security issues that uh, these codes are internal. They're not part of the mainstream code, so they need more uh, investigations before discovery. And uh, so this is a promising uh, result. And of course, it cannot be uh, like uh, generalized because our sample is very really small. It needs like uh, a lot of improvements, uh, much better uh, set of like uh, complex data or uh, better sets of like vulnerability description and like, uh, for example, arc uh, images, architecture, uh, video descriptions or uh, like attack com uh, uh, conferences that are specific on, like for example, like hat or like a specific on uh, attacks and vulnerabilities, or audio descriptions of vulnerabilities. So these uh, sources can all be combined together as a multimodal uh, approach. That I think it would be a very promising uh, approach. And at the same time, if we go to that direction, we should also consider that there are a lot of security uh, problems with LLMs as, as well. We should be aware of like specifically if we're uh, using uh, like uh, uh, formats like images and videos that can be like uh, uh, poisoning attacks, injection attacks and on LLM. So there are like other security considerations to uh, like uh, to uh, consider for those kind of uh, data. But still, I think it's uh, like really promising. Um, for for us to integrate LLMs for improving security of the kernel. Uh, so thank you for uh, attending my talk and please feel free to ask any question. I also want to thank uh, like James Morris and Paul Moore for uh, their help. They're uh, providing like their feedback, their help with the brainstorming, finding patches, and uh, that was uh, very helpful. Thanks a lot.